His left hand never lost his grip on the wheel. He pulled himself up and hit the gas. Not a car around us, just a yellow light about to turn red. Tires squealed. I put my elbow around the corner of the seat and held on to dear life as we jerked up past Santa Clara Avenue and on to the freeway. Can you please slow down? He was chewing up tires. My head was clearing, my body electric. Freddy was a man of any means necessary, an OG on the streets. He was born and raised in this madness, and yet his eyes radiated such calm as could anchor your soul. They did mine. One was slightly discolored like dishwater, same as my hair. The other, a strange blue, I cannot quite describe, reminded me of a marble I once had been given. I had seen a pit bull with eyes like his. Freddy was more than double my age, and age was a silly number meaning next to nothing. I could not have got away from him, fleet-footed as I was. He would have found me. But thank God for that half hour on the highway that day because in that amount of time, nothing more, nothing less, I became aware of a great awakening about to rise up in me. I became aware that this was my blood there beside me, that I had no fear at all in this the most fearful of circumstances, none at all. Maybe heat, maybe anger, maybe adrenaline, okay, but, in the absence of fear, grew a large seed of understanding. For he was also like me, Freddy. No fear. And for the first moment in my life I could remember, I was daughter to a man I never seen before. Chapter 5 He took me to a broken old tool shack in the heart of East Oakland, California the beating center of clandestine criminal activity, pumping its black blood of underground decentralized mercenary trade out across the land, stifling good-naturedness, choking civility and perpetrating chaos, a real triumph of the black market, a home for the underground, a perversion of faith a viral sickness of sociopathy and anti-establishment terror, murder and hidden power, blackmail and deception, betrayal and violence. Half an hour south was San Jose, half an hour west San Francisco, east was Mount Diablo, north was Berkeley, and an hour north from there, Sacramento, a.k.a. Cap City. Little did I know this one room dilapidated shack about six by 20 was ground zero for our people in my new home. And this cold blooded man who had exercised his power over me in a hot second was the heart of it all. Not by choice, by obligation. Freddie had a long history of struggle and rebellion against the established powers. He spent long periods of time behind bars, incarcerated in the prison industrial system. The city of Oakland and the state of California wanted him dead. They no longer knew he was alive. He struck fear in all other men. No one gambled with him, unless they were gambling on him. There he was, indomitable, bulletproof, whose authority in the streets was not to be trifled with or questioned. 